Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to add multiple databases in the ASP.NET Core Web API project using Entity Framework Core. For this project I will work with two databases. You will see how my repository pattern implementation helps us in the process by using abstractions that will hide all the implementation details from the presentation and the service layer. Of course, to learn more about the repository pattern, you can watch my video linked in the description below. Now, I just want to make one important statement here. From the architectural point of view, if you have to modify both databases and the data from those databases need to be in sync, then it is probably a better solution to use just a single database. So, always think about this before introducing another database in your project. Of course, if your new database is not connected to the main one and modifications are not related, it should be the case most of the time, feel free to add that new database. Now, let's start with the project. I already prepared the project that uses the Onion architecture and you can see different layers here. Here, I'm working with a single company entity and for it, I have prepared the context class with some initial apply data that I want to see it. Of course, this repository goes through the service layer to the presentation layer where I have a company's controller. This is also the architecture I use in our Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and you can find the book linked in the description below. You can check it out if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful production-ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client c -sharp apps without using JavaScript. Again, the links are in the description below. Now, with all this prepared and connected, I can add the migration file to create a database and seed some initial data. This will create a new migration file in the main project. And let's apply this migration using the update database command. Now, let's say we receive the request for another external database that we have to use for the same project. Sometimes the database would already contain the required data. But if we want to add some data to it, we need to enable migrations for their database as well. To do that, I will start with a new model creation. And in the models folder, add a new class. And let's name it client. I'll keep it as simple as possible, so we can focus on the real issue here, which is working with multiple databases. We'll assume that our new database will hold information about external clients. Now, in the repository project and the configuration folder, I will add a new class with the data to populate the client table. Of course, once I execute the new migration. So this is the feature Entity Framework Core provides for us to isolate the data we want to seed for each entity so we don't end up having a lot of seeding code inside the database context file. If you don't know why I use the iEntity type configuration interface and want to learn more about this and many other Entity Framework Core migration features, I have a detailed video explaining all of that. As usual, you will find the link to the video in the description below. Next, in the same project, I will add a new context class and name it external client context. So, this class must inherit from the DB context class. And I need a constructor here. I also need one parameter in the constructor of the DB context options type with the name of this class as a generic type parameter. And let's name it options. And pass it to the base constructor. If you use multiple contexts in our project, we have to provide the T context parameter for the DB context options class. In this case, the parameter is of external client context type. Of course, if we check the repository context class, we will see that the parameter is of the repository context type. Also, I need to override the onModelCreating method and use the modelBuilder parameter to call the ApplyConfiguration method to see the data from the client configuration class. Finally, I need a single property of the db set client type 
and I will name it clients. With this done, let's continue with the app settings file modifications. Here, I want to add a new connection string with the client connection key. After adding the connection string, I can register a new context in the service extensions class inside the extensions folder. So let's simply copy the previous registration, paste it below, and modify the method's name to configure external client context. Change the type to external client context, and change the connection name parameter here to client connection. Lastly, I have to call this method in the program class and pass a required configuration argument. And that's it. As you can see, my program class is clean because all the registrations are extracted into a separate extension class. Now, I can create a new migration to add a new database and populate the tables. So, let's use the add migration command and add a name here. And I also must specify the context I want to use, because now I have multiple ones. Also, for better organization, I will specify the output here as my already created migrations folder, but also these specific migration files will be stored inside the client migrations folder. And as you can see, I have migration files inside the specified folder. Now, let's apply the migration. And you can see that I get an error if I don't specify the context. So let's do it again, but this time provide the context. Once that's done, we will have both databases created. After successful migrations for multiple databases, we can start using both databases in our poster pattern to fetch the data from them. So let's start with the repository base class first. This class is the base class, and each repository class must inherit from it, as you can see with the company repository class. Now I can add a simple modification to enable multiple context usage for these classes. So let's modify the repository base implementation first. This time, I will use repository base with two generic parameters. The first one is for the context class, and the second one is for the entity. Additionally, I want to restrict the T context parameter to be only of the DB context type. Now, let's change the type in both of these to T context, change the name to only context, and also change the constructor parameter name. I only have to modify the company repository now to accept the first type parameter of the repository context type because this context is used for this class. At this point, with this small change, I'm supporting both databases and my other layers are not even aware of what is going on here. That said, I will simply walk you through the rest of the implementation because the code for this new repository and service classes will be almost the same as the one I already have for my company repository and service implementations. So this is something you would do in the Onion architecture, whether you have a single or multiple databases. So as you can see, I have the iClient repository interface with its members. Also, I added this interface inside the iRepository Manager interface. Next, I have a repository class in the repository project that implements this interface. You can see that following the same pattern from the company implementation, this class inherits from the repository base class and our new interface. But this time, our repository base class has different context and model type parameters. Now, Let's check the repository manager class that inherits from the iRepository manager interface. So, you can see I have a new context and a lazy class initialization. And also, in the save async method, I can check if the repository context has any tracked changes. 
If it does, I use that context to save the changes. Otherwise, I use the external context. This is the way to have a single unit of work method for multiple context objects. Now, I have also added files inside the service layer, since I need that layer to fetch the data for the presentation layer. You can see a new interface and a new service class. And of course, I modified the iService Manager interface and the Service Manager class. Now, we can use this in a controller. For this video, as you can see, I have only two actions. You can see that we didn't have to modify anything in the presentation layer. I just added a controller as I would do for any other entity. The same is true for the service layer. I didn't touch any of the service classes, just abstractions in the form of the service manager class and interface. Now, with all this implemented, it's time for testing. Let's run the app. And let's use already prepared Postman requests. The first two requests will work with the company entity. And for it, I'm using their poster context. The other two will work with the client entity. And to work with its database table, I'm using the external client context. Now, let's send the first GET request. And as you can see, I have the list of companies as a response. Next, let's send another GET request to fetch all the clients. And again, I get a list, but the list of clients. So this definitely proves that both DB contexts are doing their job correctly, and I'm getting the data from both databases. Now, let's try to create new entities in both databases. But before I do that, I will place a breakpoint inside the save async method in the repository manager class. This will prove that we are using a proper context to save the entities into their own databases. Now, let's send the first post request. My breakpoint is hit, and you can see that the repository context is tracking changes for this entity. So, it will be used to save changes into the database. Great. You can see a newly saved entity returned as a response. Now, let's just try the second post request. And again, I have a breakpoint hit. And this time, repository context doesn't have any tracked changes. So, I'm using the external client context to save the changes into the second database. And again, you can see the newly created entity as part of the response body. Excellent. Everything works as expected. So, you saw how easy it is to work with multiple databases in the same project using the repository pattern, and with it done, I can finish the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.